In this chapter, we will look at several methods that help companies make effective capital budgeting decisions. Most of these methods use cash flow numbers rather than accrual accounting. Remember from your financial accounting course that accrual accounting records revenue and expenses rather than cash inflows and cash outflows. In fact, revenues and expenses measured during a period often differ significantly from their cash flow counterparts. For purposes of capital budgeting, estimated cash inflows and outflows are the preferred inputs. Because ultimately, the value of all financial investments is determined by the value of cash flows received and paid. Sometimes cash flow information is not available. Companies can estimate net annual cash flow by adding back depreciation expense to net income. Depreciation expense is added back because it is an expense that does not require an outflow of cash. By adding depreciation expense back to net income, companies can approximate net annual cash flow. Before we look at the five methods that help companies make effective capital budgeting decisions, I just want to point out that the first four methods will use net cash flows as the inputs, but the last one, the annual rate of return, will use accrual accounting data. Listed on this slide are typical cash outflows and inflows relating to equipment purchases and replacement. These cash flows are the inputs that are considered relevant in capital budgeting decisions. Capital budgeting decisions depend on the following items. To illustrate the various capital budgeting techniques, we will use Stewart Shipping Company. They are considering an investment of $130,000 in new equipment. The new equipment is expected to last 10 years. It will have a zero salvage value at the end of its useful life. The net annual cash flows are $24,000. The cash payback period in the Stewart shipping example is 5.42 years. It is calculated by taking the net annual cash flow of $24,000 and dividing that into the cost of the investment. In this case, it was $130,000. It will take this company 5.42 years to recover the cost of the investment. When the payback technique is used to decide among acceptable alternative projects, the shorter the payback period, the more attractive the investment. This is true for two reasons. First, the earlier the investment is recovered, the sooner the company can use the cash funds for another purpose. Secondly, the risk of loss from obsolescence and changes in economic conditions is less in a shorter payback period. In the previous calculation, the cash payback period assumes equal net annual cash flows. In many cases, this assumption is not valid. In the case of an even net annual cash flows, the company determines the cash payback period when the cumulative net cash flows from the investment equal the cost of the investment. Let's assume that Chen Company proposes an investment in a new website that is estimated to cost $300,000 and expects uneven net annual cash flows. At the end of year three, cumulative net cash flow of $240,000 is less than the investment cost of $300,000. But at the end of year four, the cumulative cash inflow of $360,000 exceeds the investment cost. The cash flow needed in year four to equal the investment cost is $60,000, and that is found by taking $300,000 and subtracting $240,000. Assuming the cash flow occurred evenly during year four, we then divide this amount the $60,000 by the net annual cash flow in year four, which is $120,000, to determine the point during the year when the cash back occurs. We get 0.5 or half the year. So the cash payback period is 3.5 years. 
The cash payback technique may be useful as an initial screening tool. It may be the most critical factor in the capital budgeting decision for a company that desires a fast turnaround of its investment because of a weak cash position. It is also relatively easy to compute and understand. However, cash payback should not be the only basis for the capital budgeting decision. It ignores the expected profitability of the project, and it also ignores the time value of money. The solutions to this exercise will be provided in the next video.